Well, now let's take on this intriguing information. By the way, did you know that making your first million is way harder than making the second million? And by the way, some people make a joke and say, hey, guess what? Why don't you then start making the second one, then go to the first one? <laughs> anyway, the point is this. It's usually very hard and very technical. By the way, how many of you here have ever made their first million? And how was it? How long did it take you to make your first million? And by the way, when was the first time you made your first million? At what age did you make it? How long did it take, okay? And then compare that period with making the second one. How was it? Exactly. It's usually tricky. But when you're making your first million, it's way hard and all those kind of things. But when you're making your second, you even feel like, oh my goodness, wow. Do you know it can take like a whole stretch of two years or three years or five years to make your first million. But making the second one can even take two or three months. That's for a fact. And that is the most intriguing thing that you have ever seen in this world of the finances. And for those who are content creators, personally, it took me like 1.4 years to make the first 1,000, but it takes like a week or two to make like two or 3,000 or something of sort. The same case, it actually took me on the same topic that I'm talking about. So it takes a little bit of time, but later it's actually transformed to be a bit easier as you progress this. Now, today we're going to check what are the reasons why that exactly happens and how can you actually advise or rather adjust yourself so that at least you can sort of shorten the period because I know most of the people, especially in this era that you're living in, hey, Joseph, I don't want to lose all that long process and what have you. Anyway, let's get into the business. But if you're watching me for the first time, welcome to the Good Joseph channel. My name is Joseph. I talk about anything related to cash and investment. And by the way, don't forget to hit that like button and as well subscribe to this channel because I upload a video each and every time. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you for your eyeballs. Let's get to the business. Now, here we are. See, we are talking about making your first million, okay? And this first million here, it can be in Kenyan shillings, it can be USD, it can be Naira, it can be Kwacha, Zabian, it can be South African Rand, whatever the point it is, okay? The point is the concept remains the same. Get the concept here, okay? Now, let me tell you one secret. And I know most of the people usually run towards getting this amount of money for you to be called a millionaire, all right? A millionaire. And by the way, if you can define simply what is a millionaire is an individual whose liabilities or the debt that he or she owns compared to that amount of money or the asset that you, if you do the difference, then he has an excess of what? A million, Bob, that's now your what? By default, you are a millionaire. And there is a difference between being a millionaire and having a million. I repeat, there is a difference between being a millionaire and having a million. You can have an individual who has a million but does not have the millionaire mindset. That's a reality. So there is a difference between having a million bob in your hands and being a millionaire. Because when you have someone who is a millionaire, is a someone who has the capacity to raise a million. For example, if it took you like four years to lay all the strategies and all the processes for you to realize a million bob or a million, whatever the thing it is, okay, then you already know. For example, let's say it took you five years. Let's say you are selling spare parts, for example. Let's say you are selling spare parts, okay? Spare parts, okay? And then it took you, let's say, four years. Four years to make sure what to do, what to make your first million. So you know very well the process of actually getting ahead and be able to raise a million bob using that business or whatever the business it is. Now, you see, why is it hard to make your first million? This is the reason, okay? You are starting at zero. When you say you are starting at zero, it means you are starting with nothing. Probably you are starting with nothing. Probably the only thing that you have here is the skills. And guess what? Energy, okay? And time. Those are the three things that you have for you to make a what? They are first million. That's what you're supposed to understand, okay? Remember, when you're starting, guess what you have? You only have skills, maybe you're employed. You have the energy, maybe you're young or something of sort. And then you have the time, obviously, from where you are to till when you're going to make your million. Now, here comes, okay? And you remember one thing. There is this principle that says it takes money to make money. That's for sure. Now, when you have these things and you have to convert it to making money, guess what? You can only trade these things. And when you trade skills, it means you have to trade skill plus time. For example, let's say you are a teacher, you're employed by the government or employed by a, a private sector. Therefore, you trade from your 9 a.m. or rather 8 a.m. all the way to 5 p.m. for them to pay you, say, 50,000, okay? 50,000. And remember one thing, that 50,000 that they pay you at the end of the month is what you're supposed to eat, drink, dress, and also, it assumed you're supposed to use your own brain to make sure that you raise this amount of money. Guess what? You're trading the skills. And when you're trading the skills, of course, you leverage on what? You leverage on discipline and you leverage on time. That's for a fact. And then that is a little bit technical and tough. That's for sure. Okay. Now, when you're trading your energy, obviously it means when you're young, maybe let's say you got employed when you're say, at your 30s or maybe let's say uh, still at 40s, you're still energetic or maybe let's say at your 20s. Then at that particular uh, moment now, you leverage on your energy when you're at the high 
enhanced productivity. That's the time that you can sacrifice. That's the time that you can go without eating and all those kind of things. Like you, you can imagine this. If you're earning a 50,000 a salary at the end of the month and you can only maybe set aside like 15K, for example. I'm just saying, if you can set aside 15,000, okay? And you decide to be saving this amount of money. And let's say maybe you do not have the time to actually go ahead and actualize a business for you to increase another source of income by you having, you know, having two active lives, the active from where you're employed and active from where you actually run your business. Then it takes a lot of time. See, when you have less money than what you make, uh, if you, when you have the less money, you're going to need more of time to make a million bob. But when you have more of the money, then you need less of the time. For example, you have somebody who is earning 500K, let's say for like the politicians in Kenya. See, they are make, they make this amount of money. So this guy, maybe because they have an expensive lifestyle, maybe perhaps this guy survives on the 50% of this salary. Maybe the guy survives on 50 or 250 Gs, okay, or 250K. Now, the remaining is 250. Now, the guy needs only four months to make sure that he get there a million bob. Now, the point is this. The reason why it is usually hard to make your first million Million, it is because you're starting with nothing. You're, you're leveraging on the skills, you're leveraging on time, and also you're leveraging on what? On your energy. And the moment you leverage on these kind of a things, you're actually using a non-money product to make money. And at that particular point, you either solve people's problems, or you sell an item, or guess what? Because there are only three ways or two ways on how you can actually make money. Okay? Number one, you either offer services, or two, you get, a, or there are actually three. One, you either get, you have the skills that you can actually leverage on, you get employed. Two, you either sell services. Or three, you get what? You sell some products or good. Or maybe you discover something, a product that you said is out there. So you're leveraging on what you do not have to get what you have. And at that particular point, it's become harder. For example, let me ask a very simple question, okay? Let's say we have two people here, for example. I'm going to use this simple example and I want you to relate to it. Follow me, all right? So you have two individuals here. You have individual A and individual B. <clears throat> right now, uh, this individual B gets approached by an individual Y. <clears throat> this individual Y goes to the individual A and tells the individual A, hey, guess what? I want you to get out early in the morning at 7 a.m., all right? Go out there <clears throat> and make me 300 Kenyan shillings. Make me 300 Kenyan shillings, okay? Okay. This is what you tell the individual, hey, go make me 100 Kenyan shillings. You give them nothing. You give them zero. You give them nothing. Just tell them, hey, guess what? Wake up early in the morning as from 7 a.m. You just go somewhere and go make me 300 and come at the evening with 300. So probably this guy has nowhere to start. You need to make some, maybe maybe you can make some calls. You go to people who are doing some few jobs and you ask for a job. Hey, can I help you do this and this and maybe pay this or whatever. So you're leveraging either your energy, your skills and something of sort. So individual A is giving nothing. Now, the same individual Y goes to individual B and tells them, hey, guess what? <clears throat> I'm going to give you this 1,000 bob and go make me 300 out of it. Go make me 300. Guess what? This guy has been leapfrogged, meaning you have something that you can trade on. Now, this money does not only function as money now. This functions as a tool. It's, for example, when I tell you, hey, get, take this nail. I want to drill this nail inside that wood, and I don't give you the hammer. Guess what happens? You're going to improvise. You're going to look for stones or metals or whatever the thing it is. And assuming maybe you're in a place whereby the availability of the stones and the metals to hit that nail to drive it through the wood, it is not available. So what do you do? It becomes very technical to a point whereby you'll never even drive that uh, nail into the wood. But when I give you this a thousand bob, assuming now this a thousand bob functioned as a hammer. Now this is a hammer, okay? If this is a hammer, you go ahead and tell you this is now the the, the 300 now is functions as our nail, okay? And I'm telling you now go drive this nail through the wood. Now the actual part of actually driving the nail through the wood, it's you making 300. It becomes easier why you already have the hammer, you already have the wood and you have the nail. Come on, go ahead and do the thing. So the point is this, when you give this individual be the 1000 bob and you tell them, hey, go ahead and do what? Go make me 300. A little bit, you're going to be okay because now, guess what? This guy has actually a step ahead compared to the individual B because now the guy can actually take this 100 a thousand bob go maybe to a market buy some vegetables buy some fruits and something of sort and you can resell them so even if you don't make the hundred per day you at least have high chances of making it compared to the individual b why because now the money that you are given early in the morning which is a thousand bob it's no longer money it is a tool and this is the concept that I want to drive to you. View money as a tool to help you make more of it, not as a product to be consumed. That is the point that I always, always, at all the time, try to drive to you.
that is a fact and that's a reality so what i mean is this it is always good to make sure that at least you understand this concept because if you miss this concept it's gonna be very tough for you now let's go and answer the question of now why is it easier to make the second million compared to the first million now you already have now let's go back to the point person a and person b the person a has actually their million bob with them all right and person b has nothing all right guess what happens now this individual can actually create another million out of the existing million for example if i may be a little bit fair to you and ask you if i give you ten thousand kenyan shillings and i tell you hey go ahead and make me another ten thousand kenyan shillings you can you, you, you have a, I mean, like, you, you have high chances of doing so compared to this individual. This guy can actually leverage on the tool that he has. You can actually go there and buy a product. For example, hey, guess what? You can go buy some maize and you resell that maize. You can go buy beans and you resell that maize. Guess what? You can actually try and import some things from China and be able to resell them. You can actually make some cash out of it. You can go ahead and use this a million bob. You can open a business somewhere. Yeah, I know there are chances of it failing, but the problem, but the fact remains is you, there are also high chances of you making another one like this one so therefore it takes a little and then the other thing what happens with money and this is what i wanted to tell you that's something that i never thought money gives you the confidence if you've never known it gives you the confidence and this is very vital when it comes to making money what do i mean by confidence now this confidence and i want you guys to track on this See, when you have this a million bob, there is that confidence or there is a, an aura of confidence that emanates from deep inside of you. And guess what happens now? You, you can actually slice some of this money, like say, maybe you can slice like, say, even just slice like 400k, okay? You slice like 400k and you go start a business. And sometimes I came to realize in this life and I can attest to this personally. So when you have this amount of money, you can slice 400, you don't know at the back of your head, I have like another soft landing of 600 Gs. So I have another two times of trying, okay? Or three or five times, depends on how much you want to start with okay now you can actually go ahead and use this amount of money to leverage and starting a business out of it and the moment you get into a business with the mentality right mindset with the right skills and the confidence that you have it you're gonna do something for example can you imagine this i have a million bob and someone else has four hundred thousand, and we want to start a business that is both of us is 400 so you go start yours at 400 i start mine at 400 so the guy who only has 400 you know in kiswahili we say mbele na nyuma we don't have any other money it is your dear money it is your heart money it is your the most of money Okay, guess what happens? Now, the guy with 400 is a guy who can actually approach life with paranoia and paranoid and something. So you're kind of worried. And you know one thing, business does not need that kind of an individual. You need to go into it with full force, with full understanding, with that confidence, with that aura. And that is exactly how you manage and that's how you succeed. Because most of the people I realize they don't achieve their dreams because they fear, fear of the failure. Or maybe they fear what people are going to say and all those kind of things. Then they fear losing their money. All right. And of course, I do not advocate people losing their money. But for you, to make and succeed in life you must have an aspect of risk taking inside of you that's a reality has never changed you never change i'm not looking at it from a point of it changing it soon so the point is this so when you subject these people with a million the one with a million bob has high chances of actually multiplying that money because he's now using the existing money as a tool to make more of it compared to when you have nothing and that's what answers our question why it is easier or harder to make the first million compared to the second million that is a concept and now what exactly can you be able to do so that at least you can shorten the period approach life with confidence okay when you know very well you do not have the money and you are good at your skills leverage on your skills work on your skills sharpen on your skills have the energy and respect time that is it because if you approach life with this aspect of hey you want to get rich quick and something of sort you're gonna lose a lot along the way because you're actually trying to arm twist the actual process of creating wealth and that's it and by the way for those who are here and they have some a little bit of money god has blessed them do you um b b before you got the money and when you got the money, at which occasion when you actually started to play in the long term? I'm going to repeat my question. Before you had the money and when you had the money, when are now able to actually play long term? When can you say, hmm, I can start a business. I don't even have a hurry. I can even go for one year. I don't. But when you see, when you have money, you tend to play long term. You don't have the issues to do with quick. That's why you find most of the rich people don't play the lottery. No, they would like, they would like go and buy shares of a certain company and put it out there for the next 30. They don't have a problem with it. They can actually leverage on that on, on the time. But when you do not have the money, when someone tells you you can 
can invest. That's why I always come here and tell you invest on T-bill, t whatever the things that I usually talk about. And then you're like, hey, it takes a little bit of time. It's, uh, I don't know whether I can actually manage it. You actually tend to be in discipline when you do not have the cash. But when you get it, you tend to develop that confidence. You play the long game and all those kind of things. You become a little bit patient, you know, confident, and all those kind of things. So that's a reality that comes in or kicks in when you actually have the money. So what is the parting shot of this video? You look money from the point of a tool, not a product to be consumed. A tool to make you more of it, but not a product to actually satisfy you. And I know <clears throat> most of the people who were never brought up with money in their lives, they may tend to view money as a product to be consumed, and that can actually limit you <clears throat> from achieving your goals anyway guys guess what you can always pick that number of mine from the description of this specific video give me a call or text me on whatsapp or you can shoot me an email let's talk business out for those services at a personal level for now so goodbye and see you <coughs> in the next one